biggest fears I have of surviving in a winter environment is not being able to stay warm. If you can't keep yourself warm, then you're not going to be doing much of anything else. You know, never mind trying to go and get food. Um, never mind protecting your your campsite or whatever the case might be. If you can't keep yourself warm, then you will die. And most people in survival situations die of exposure, especially in the winter time. That's why it's important to keep yourself warm off grid if there was a power outage like many people experienced recently in Texas. Now, more often than not, conventional methods are going to be preferred. Things like a, a propane heater, a kerosene heater, a diesel heater. But in some instances, it's going to make more sense, especially if you have an unlimited supply of wood to use something like a wood stove. Now, this isn't a wood stove which is made for indoor use, as in in your house or at your cabin. I have seen people put this particular model into RVs or, you know, makeshift truck toppers. But this is a portable stove. This is probably my favorite portable wood stove that I've ever owned, and I've owned quite a few. Um, I've owned several tit titanium-based wood stoves, which are ultralight, ranging from 3 pounds to 10 pounds. I've owned, um, and I still do own, cast iron wood stoves, portable ones, and just uh, non-stainless steel wood stoves. This, by far, is the most durable, the most modular, uh, the most amount of features and just the nicest looking stove and the most well-made that I've ever used. And this is the Winterwell Nomad stove. And you can see this is called the Winterwell Nomad view because you have glass on the sides. So it creates a nice atmosphere in your tent. And it also is going to provide illumination. And of course you can cook on it. So I don't really know where to start in terms of describing all of the cool features of this stove. I guess we could start at the bottom. Uh, the legs, they fold inwards. They got really strong rivets on there. They can really support the weight of the stove and, you know, probably an additional 30, 40 pounds of stuff on there if you wanted to. And you can see there's these drying racks, which these are good for, <laughs> even if you just want to keep your food warm, or if you want to dry off some socks or something like that, it comes in handy. They also act as handles for you to carry the stove itself. So this top here, this can come open. So if you wanted to cook on an open fire, you could. If you wanted to roast something. So as you can see, there's a front dampener here. And if, I, if you close this, starve the fire of oxygen so it's not going to burn and the degree to which you keep this open that's going to determine how much airflow gets in there and how fast your fire is going to burn you also have a dampener up here so when this is horizontal that means the fire has no oxygen when it's vertical the more vertical it is the more oxygen it's going to have so there's two different ways that you can control just how much uh, oxygen the fire is going to get and thus how hot it's going to get and this like I said it's a, a very robust build so I'm not concerned at all about warping this stove uh, some of the thinner portable stoves you really have to worry about how much wood you're putting in there and how hot you're going to get the stove <laughs> you know I, I have a tendency especially when it's really cold out minus 30 to uh, really push my stoves to the limit because it gets cold and that's one of the few ways you can really keep warm especially you know if you're stuffing it before you go to bed at night you want it to stay warm for a long time um, this is going to be able to handle that type of abuse as you can see here these um, there's a bit of play in these and that's a good thing that there's play in there because if you are going to carry it but when you see when they're resting they're very very sturdy and just everything about this stove, like it's just a very sturdy unit. Right now I got it on some logs because it's not the tallest stove. Now you can get leg extenders for it, I believe. But um, I find if you just rest it on some logs, you know, you still get a nice sturdy platform. Now on here, I have this pipe oven. And 
Haven't actually used it yet, I'm just kind of breaking it in today. And what it is, it's a double wall. So the warm air that's heated by the fire goes through this pipe. The actual air never makes contact with the inside of the oven itself. But that air is circulating throughout this double walled uh, chamber here. So it's actually pretty neat how it works. So if you wanted to bake stuff, bake potatoes, bake cookies, or even if you just wanted to warm stuff up, you could cook fries. I mean, you could cook whatever you, whatever you could imagine uh, baking at home, you could cook it in here. Now, obviously you're limited in terms of the surface area in there, but uh, it's pretty cool because it also, also gives you a temperature gauge on there. And then of course, if it's getting too hot in there, you would just open it a bit to let some of that hot air out. And that's how you would regulate the temperature. So yeah, it's a really cool add-on. You can also get water tanks that nest right around the pipe. And uh, I don't have one of those today. It can definitely come in handy, especially if you're trying to melt snow or if you just wanna have a constant supply of you know pre-boiled water. And then it's such that once you're done heating it, you can actually hang it off the rack there underneath. So it's just a, a really cool modular stove and uh, there's just so many different accessories for this stove it's just really well thought out and this is a stove that i know i'm gonna have for years and years um, if it ever failed you can also get replacement glass but this is gap glass which is rated for you know very very high temperatures the handles work really well uh, I've, usually with these handles they tend to burn your hands but that's not the case with this I've never had that happen on this. Yeah, so if you if you want to control the airflow into the fire, so that would be no oxygen. So that would have that would cause your fire to go out eventually. If you want it just a little bit, so if you want it to go to bed and you want it to, this to burn slowly throughout the night, you put it there. Maybe if you're in here, it was getting kind of hot, you know, you put it there. And if you're cold and you want lots of oxygen, you keep it wide open. And if you want it, you know, wide open, wide open, then you open her up. That's going to give it the most oxygen. So right now it's pumping some smoke in here. Eventually, once once the fire gets going, it will uh, it'll stop pumping that smoke. So there's a screen to prevent the bottom from warping. So that that distance there prevents the bottom of the stove from getting warped and beat up over time and just creates a nice elevated uh, platform and uh, all the ash is going to fall in there and then you could just scrape the ash out in the morning so this is also going to increase the amount of heat in your tent because it's just more metal that's hot radiating more heat as opposed to all that heat being sent up and out of here so you're going to have that the heat coming off the oven as well uh, heat that like i said would normally be lost through the chimney it's obviously a lot to pack in uh, this is something that unless you were in maybe maybe at a party of a few people you're camping with if you were solitary uh, you may not want to make the commitment to bring something like this but I, I definitely think there's some recreational value in having something like that out here if, if you're with your family and it's just something else to do you know out here and uh, you know just gives you more options for what you can cook Another thing that's really great about it is because it has the windows, it provides a nice atmosphere, but it also is going to light up your tent a little bit when the windows aren't black. So it, it's also going to be dual purpose in the sense of it will light up your tent uh, marginally, depending on how, how good the fire is going, of course. And so it's a heater, it's a, a illumination source, and it's also how you would cook your food. You can dry stuff on it because of the racks really easily. You can keep your food warm. You know, you, you could keep your uh, coffee warm and stuff like that. So it's just, I can't say enough good things about the stove. It's just fantastic. Now it comes at a premium in terms of the price you pay. I believe these range from around four to $500 US, but uh, you get what you pay for with a winter well stove. And if you pick one up at CanadianPreparedness.com, I can give you 10% off. Use coupon code PREPPINGGEAR, and I guarantee you, you won't be disappointed. This is just a 
it's just a fantastic piece of kit that I would say if you don't have an in-house off-grid solution for meeting your energy needs namely heating then you should have something like this you know whether it's a propane heater or a wood stove or a, you know a forced air heater a fireplace obviously if you have that that would definitely work so in terms of the tent I believe that the the amount of height you get is going to vary in terms of the accessories that are on there uh, right now the height of this is probably around 104 inches because I have the pipe oven on if the pipe was oven wasn't on there it would be around 90 inches tall you could pretty much put this in any wood stove tent winter well sales you know additional pipes if you need more pipes to increase the length you definitely want the chimney well above your tent probably about 18 inches or so just to make sure that there's no ashes like hot sparks that fly out of there now as you can see up there if you go up there there are there's a spark arrestor up there but i really don't like that spark arrestor too much i find that it doesn't it's not that secure i mean it could have a bit of a finer mesh to it just so it catches some of the finer sparks that come off of there i haven't had any issues with this tent so far as you can see it's kind of bent because i stepped on it once but uh, it still works fine serves its function i believe winterwell also has additional accessories that you can put on there if you wanted more ash catching protection which can definitely be worth considering depending on you know what kind of tent you use now this is a gamma 6 tent by nor tent uh, we don't currently have these in stock but we're going to be getting them back in stock soon but like i said you could use this in any type of tent if you get uh, what's called a stove jack which is just a silicone insert you can modify any tent you have to be a wood stove tent or you could just use a tarp you know and uh, modify that with a silicon stove jack so if you come inside here this stove pipe right here is incredibly hot and would melt the fabric of any tent so to prevent that we have this silicon layer which separates the main tent which is made of like a still nylon material from the very very hot scalding wood pipe so that's going to allow you to and you can get these as you can see it's sewn on there but this is of course factory made by Nortent but you can actually buy the silicone and do it yourself if you wanted to this assembles really nicely really easily it all just plugs into place you don't need any tools to set it up it breaks apart into six pieces and it all fits nicely inside the stove when you're done so it acts as a rectangle so it's a really nice shape to work with if you're transporting stuff in a sled just the craftsmanship of the stove all the rivets on here are really sturdy where you're often going to have problems with stoves like this is at the junctions you know like at the door hinge the door hinge on this is very sturdy it's got a nice little bit of play in there it's actually welded on the hinges are welded and there's a screw in there so if you did ever have problems with the door this could easily be repaired it's got just enough weight to it that although it's a portable stove it's something which will probably last you a lifetime if you take care of it to get that black suit off the windows i find just using some easy oven off household cleaner gets that off like almost instantly you'll definitely want to clean the inside of the pipes every once in a while just to uh, prevent any soot buildup which could be a fire hazard at some point now i've never personally used this stove in temperatures below minus 10 but i've used stoves that are far worse than it um, in terms of weight and uh, durability in temperatures which are much much colder so this will be more than sufficient to keep you to keep you alive so long as you have an ample dry wood source and emphasis on dry because be careful that you're not cutting green wood thinking that it's dead wood uh, oftentimes people will make that mistake they'll see a tree in the winter time because there's no leaves on the trees you'll think it's dead and you'll cut all that firewood and you'll be really proud of yourself only to realize that that tree was still alive and it's not going to be immediately apparent if you don't have an eye for that sort of thing um, a way to 
figure out whether or not a standing tree is dead is whether or not there's any fine branches. If there's a lot of fine um, tertiary and quaternary branches, then that means that there's going to be leaves on those branches next year. But if it's just like a stump and, you know, a few jagged sort of uh, offshoots, no um, tertiary branches branching off, then it's probably going to be dead. But you'll definitely, you know, want to make sure you're putting the right types of wood in here, dry wood. And uh, that's just a big mistake you can make because you could labor for a long time, you know, end up cutting a bunch of green wood and then come nighttime, you have no wood it's not going to burn in here it might but it's going to take so long to heat it up and it's going to require constant maintenance and it's not going to be good for you you're going to be breathing in uh, lots of bad stuff and uh, it's not good i've seen people install these in rvs you know their own sort of makeshift uh, truck toppers and stuff like that it's not recommended for indoor use or for like in a cabin just because of its size it's sturdy enough that it's going to be capable of being used that readily because I pre would presume if you're using this in an RV you're going to be using it a lot not just like a you know a few times a season and this is durable enough that it could it could handle daily use check it out canadianpreparedness.com thanks for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe canadian prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER, all one word in all caps.